Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we're going to be discussing the perpendicular bisector theorem, the converse to the perpendicular bisector theorem, and how we can apply it. So the perpendicular bisector theorem says, in a plane, if a point lies on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it's equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. Okay, so here is a picture to help us understand. Here's this segment, segment AB. Okay, and segment AB is cut by a perpendicular bisector, and that's this line here, perpendicular bisector P. Now, this point P in the middle here is our perpendicular bisector, is where our perpendicular bisector crosses our line segment. So that point shows very specific things. It shows that that line crosses at 90 degrees. This point also divides our segment AB exactly in half on both sides. Now, the theorem says that if we have this perpendicular bisector that divides it exactly in half, then this point up here, point C, is also going to be equidistant from those two points. Okay, so if it's on that line, any point on that line will be equidistant. Basically, what's happening is when we have a perpendicular bisector, we end up creating an isosceles triangle if, with any point that lies on that perpendicular bisector of a segment connecting that point to the endpoints of that segment. So the converse, on the other hand, says if a point is equidistant from the endpoints, so if this point here is equidistant away from the endpoints of a segment, then it's on the perpendicular bisector. So if there's a perpendicular bisector, any point on it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. That's basically what these two things say. So let's take a second to apply this and figure out what it means. So we want to find the measure using the diagram below. Well, let's take a look at this first one here. So we want to figure out what RS is, this length right here. Now, by that, now we see that this side over here is 6.8. Now, according to our perpendicular bisector theorem, if this line right here is a perpendicular bisector, which it is because it crosses at a perpendicular angle and it divides that segment exactly in half, then this side and this side are equidistant. So that means RS equals 6.8. Awesome. Okay, let's take a look at this next one here. So this one says we want to figure out what this whole length EG is here. So this one kind of uses that converse to the perpendicular bisector theorem. And the reason why is because we have this point H that's 24 away from both sides. And this is a right angle. So if it's equidistant from both sides, then that means that it divides our perpendicular bisector exactly in half. And so that means if this side is 9.5, this side is also 9.5. So to figure out the length of EG, what we need to do is do 9.5 plus 9.5, and that's going to end up giving us 19. Now let's take a look at this last one over here. So this one over here also uses the perpendicular bisector theorem. The reason we know is because we can see this perpendicular angle and that the segment is bisected into two equal parts. That's what clues us in one way. If it's of a right angle, but the segment is not bisected, it's the other sides that are told that we're that we're told are congruent, then it's the converse. So in this case, where those are that way, then we know we're using that perpendicular bisector theorem. And the perpendicular bisector theorem says that this side here, CD, is equivalent to this side AD. So those are congruent or equal. So I can set those two pieces, 3x plus 14, equal to this 5x. And I can use that to solve for x. And then once I get x, I can plug it in to figure out how long AD is. So I'm going to solve for x. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides and get 14 equals 2x. So x equals 7. Now I'm going to put 7 back in here. So 5 times 7 equals 35. So length AD equals 35. Okay, so that's how we would apply that. Please check out the next video in which we take the perpendicular bisector theorem and the converse to the perpendicular bisector theorem, and we look at them more in depth. In the next video, we're just going to take the perpendicular bisector theorem, and we're going to prove it. So why does it work? And that proof is really important because if we don't understand the proof, then we can't understand the theorem. So we're not going to prove both the perpendicular bisector theorem and its converse, but by proving the perpendicular bisector theorem, it helps you understand why the converse works as well. And the biggest thing that we're going to see here is we're actually going to use those triangle congruence properties, including side angle side, angle angle side, things like that to help prove it. So please check out the next video in which we prove why the perpendicular bisector theorem works.